Good evening to you, parishioners and friends of St. Francis Xavier and St. John the Evangelist Catholic Communities. My name is Trish Stab. I welcome you to our Sunday Eucharist celebration on the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. In today's Gospel, Jesus taught us to be open-minded and have faith in those doing God's work. He acknowledged that those who do the right thing in God's name will have their reward and those who have done the wrong thing will be punished accordingly. In this Mass, we pray for the intentions of all parishioners and friends of our parishes, Rosario Limbaring, Van den Acker, Lawrence Bettergig, Angela, the end of the pandemic, and for the repose of the souls of Oct Octavio Figueroa, Hendrik, Geoffrey Saliba, Carmosita Rondidas, and Flora Bell Pellerine, and special intention members of the police force and emergency services. Please join in the prayer to St. Joseph. St. Joseph, you were receptive to God working in your life. Help us by your prayers at this time of trial. You kept Jesus and Mary under your watchful care. May your prayers assist our local church to respond to those in need. You taught the Christ child your trade and prayers. Help us to follow his example of love. You are part of God's plan for all humanity. Assist us to be vigilant and responsible this day. You spent your life in service. May we be mindful of others, particularly the elderly and vulnerable, caring for them in these difficult days. You trusted in the clear primacy of God over all history and every situation. Help us to grow in faith and prayer to the Father. Thy will be done. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. You're welcome today, the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time Year B, on which the scripture readings gives us a very strong warning against jealousy, intolerance, and giving scandals. We pray that God will give us the spirit and grace to be a role model to people around us. In this Mass, we remember Kamechita Rondites, Florebel Pelerin, Octavio Figueroa, Jeffrey Sab Sab Saliba, Death Anniversary. And we also remember Rosario Limbarin, Vanden Aka, Lawrence Betagig, Sikh, the Almighty God, grant them healing, strength, and grace. We also remember, we pray for our law enforcement officers and those who work in the emergency services and for our own different intentions. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. My Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory Lord, to God Lord. in the highest. And on earth, peace, peace to people peace of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all, by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attend your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven through our lord jesus christ's son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever amen, amen. a reading from the book of numbers the lord came down in the cloud he spoke to moses but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it in the into the 70 elders. When the spirit came on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back at the camp. One was called Eldad and the other Medad. The spirit came down on them. Though they had not gone to the tent, their names were enrolled among the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then, the, then said Joshua, the son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses answered him, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets, and the Lord gave his spirit to them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. So in them your servant finds instructions. Give reward is in their keep great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect all his errors? From hidden faults acquit me. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. 
The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The second reading is from the letter of St. James. An answer for the rich. Stop crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting. Your clothes are all eaten up, eaten by moths. All your gold and your silver are corroding away, and the same corrosion will be your own sentence, and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Labourers mowed your fields, and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back, calling out, Realise that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth you have had a life of comfort and luxury. In the time of slaughter you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please welcome the Gospel. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Make us holy in the truth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel. According to Mark, Glory to you, o Lord. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw a man who is not one of us casting out devils in your name. And because he was not one of us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said, you must not stop him. No one who works a miracle in my name is likely to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. <clears throat> if anyone gives you a cup of water to drink just because you belong to Christ, then I tell you solemnly, he must certainly not lose his reward. But anyone who is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who have faith, will be better thrown into the sea with a great millstone round his neck. And if your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell, into the fire that cannot be put out. And if your foot should cause you to sin, Cut it off. It is better for you to enter into thy flame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye should cause you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die nor their fire goes out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel is firstly a story of possessiveness, or perhaps jealousy. The disciples are not at all happy because they saw a man, not one of their group, cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus. They were quite upset, possessive. They were given the privilege of sharing Jesus' powers of healing and driving out evil spirits and they were jealous for their position. 
their response showed that they were not into sharing their ministry. They even tried to stop the man. Stop a man from doing a good thing in the name of Jesus. We must always remember Jesus' response. You must not stop him. Anyone who is not against us is for us. Historically, Christians have forgotten, disregarded or ignored this message. Catholics and Protestants, Catholics and Orthodox, other Christians have even waged war on each other because of their allegiance to their own particular Christian tradition. And many of us hearing today's gospel were raised in places and times where there was conflict between Christians of different traditions. I remember it. I'm certain you do. Jesus' response was forgotten. It was ignored. As Catholics, we cannot claim to have a monopoly on doing good. As Christians, we believe that the church is God's special way of revealing himself to the world. However, we, not can, we, we cannot then go on to claim that God is only to be found in the church, that in his church alone is there truth and goodness. If that were the case, then billions of people would be excluded from knowing and loving God or doing his will. And we know this not to be true. And we know this to be contrary to God's love for all of us. Living in a society like ours, this multicultural, multi-religious society, tells us that God is doing his work through all kinds of people, good people, good people who believe in the importance of truth, justice, love, service, freedom and peace. They practice the kingdom of God, sometimes without knowing it. God is present and God is working through such people. And we can be sure that God will reach them in his own way. And always remember that we are called to be members of the kingdom that embraces all who proclaim the good news. And today's gospel also moves to a much more relevant problem as far as we Christians are, are concerned. There is a severe warning against those who prevent people from coming closer to God. Now, interestingly, the word scandal originally means a stumbling block, like a large stone in a person's way that causes him or her to trip and fall. And in today's message, Jesus refers to stumbling. We have to ask ourselves, am I a stumbling block? Am I a cause of scandal? Would any person want to be a Christian because they know me? So today's readings are basically saying two things. Firstly, we are to learn to recognise that God does his work through all people. And our own parish patron, John the Evangelist, in his first letter said very bluntly, where there is caring love, there is God. Christians clearly have no monopoly on loving others. And we can add that wherever there is true justice being practised, there is God. Wherever there is true freedom being promoted or defended, there is God. Wherever there is a person, perhaps a total stranger from another race or culture, who acts as a true sister or brother to me, there is God. 
Secondly, as a Christian, through our baptism, we have been called to be for others another Christ. That is our mission. We are called to reach out, to love, to be just to others, and to be truly sister or brother. We've also been called to be prophet, to proclaim in words and actions that the source of all love, justice, freedom, solidarity with others is a God who loves, who forgives, and who wants to share all wants all to share in a life that is enriched at every level. Now to some action. Archbishop Peter has called the Archdiocese to mission. He has asked every parish to examine its collective conscience. Are we witnessing the gospel? Are we reaching out to those in our community who need a helping hand? Or who have removed themselves from our community or who don't really understand why it exists? Many of us know someone who has left the church. Some of us know why. Are we reaching out to them? Archbishop Peter calls us to pray. He calls us to discern how to go forward. Many of the parishes in southern Melbourne are small communities with limited resources. We are one of those. Could more cooperation with neighbouring parishes enable us to reach out more effectively to others in our community? I leave you with the question, what shall we do? Let us stand to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today we observe with the Universal Church this 107th Migrant and Refugee Sunday. Inspired by the witness of Pope Francis's commitment to those separated from their homeland with the theme, 
towards an ever wider we. May Pope Francis's call to heal wounds and to seek out the straying without prejudice or fear, inspire us all to welcome refugees and migrants with respect so that all peoples are united in peace and harmony. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. May governments work together to make a personal and collective commitment that cares for all our brothers and sisters who continue to suffer because of war, violence, poverty, the pandemic and climate change. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. May this International Day for the Total Elimination of Nuclear Weapons, the first to be observed by the United Nations in 1946, be reaffirmed by all nations so that the cloud of conflict gives way to the light of diplomacy and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. For those who are sick because of COVID-19 and for our parishioners, family members and friends, Rosario Limbaring, Vanden Acker, Lawrence Buttergig, Faye Pattinson. May they be comforted by the love of family and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For those who have died on their journey to freedom and those who died in nuclear attack attacks on Japan in 1945 and for all the suffering souls in purgatory, and we remember those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Carmen Sita Ronditas, Florabel Pellerin, Octavio Figueroa, Hendrik, Geoffrey Saliba. May they be welcomed by our Mother Mary into God's heavenly home. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, gracious hear, us. hear us. Let us pause and pray with our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious, gracious hear us. Holy beloved Father, we ask you to grant the followers of Jesus and all people of goodwill the grace to do your will on earth. Bless each act of welcome and outreach that draws those in exile into the we of community and of the church, so that our earth may truly become what you yourself created it to be, the common home of all our sisters and brothers. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice are yours, may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to the disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial, sacrificial victim by whose death you wait to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with, the Holy, with his Holy Spirit, and may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make our force an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her glorious spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint John the Evangelist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely from failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, Lord. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you are their passing from this life, especially Carmen Chita, Rondidas, Florebel, Pelerin, Octavio Figora, Jeffrey Saliba, and all the holy souls in purgatory. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are waiting in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a COVID safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us a mind and body, that we may be cause in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We listen to the pastoral letter, please. Pastoral letter from our parish priest. Dear prisoners, the grace and peace of Christ be with you. You may have wondered why you have not seen me presiding over the Eucharistic celebration recently. I have been unwell. On Sunday the 19th of September, I underwent an appendix operation. It took two hours and the surgeon said he was happy with the outcome, but it was messy. After five days as a patient, as a patient in Peninsula Private, I was discharged on Wednesday the 22nd and now I need some time to recuperate. Please refer all parish matters to Father Jude until further notice. I look forward to seeing you all again once I have the energy to do so. Please keep me in your prayers. Father Chinua Okiki, Parish Priest. We, con we continue to pray for him. A little bit weak, but still a young man. <laughs> trying to bubble up, but he cannot push beyond his limits. We pray that God will grant him healing and quick recovery. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thank you. Peace to God. Thank you for joining us in this wonderful Eucharistic celebrations. May God continue to protect us and be with us in this hard journey of Corona. But God will see us through. Have a wonderful night and a wonderful week. God bless you. strangers in God's house. We are fed and we are nourished by the strength of those who care, by the strength of those who care. We are companions on the journey.